Well, one, I want to thank you all for coming. Thanks to my House colleagues and my Senate colleagues who could be here. You know, when the news broke, all of you had an opportunity to answer a question from the press of, did you agree with me or did you not? And all of you supported me, and for that I'm certainly grateful. Uh, I want to take the time to, to thank the Limbaugh family for being here. If you all could stand up, I'd like to, for my house to give you all a welcome. I'd also like to take the opportunity to welcome a few people who without I would not be here. Uh, my father, uh, Everett, my stepmom Bonnie, my brother Jason, and my uncle Wendell. Could you please stand and let the house recognize you? We're here to honor a man who's been the voice of conservative America for more than a decade now, who rose from humble origins in southeast Missouri to become the most listened to talk host on radio, and who, in case many of you didn't realize, has from time to time been involved in a controversy or two. As we all know, the news broke about my plans to induct, induct Rush Limbaugh into the Hall of Famous Missourians, why, right as he was embroiled in a national controversy. It was a controversy that led many people to ask me, why would I be crazy enough to think the most successful person in talk radio history deserved a spot in the Hall? Well, the truth is, the idea came from the same place that many of my good ideas come from, my father. We were at lunch several months ago, and we were talking about what an immense privilege the speaker has to enshrine deserving Missourians into the hall, and I told him about my plans to induct Buck O'Neill and Dred Scott, and our conversations turned to other worthy Missourians. Without hesitation, my dad suggested Rush Limbaugh. When he said the name to me, I knew that it was not only a good idea, but also something that I really believed was the right thing to do. And it didn't change when liberal groups tried to suggest that I should back away from my decision because of controversial statements or stances that Rush has taken. These groups tried to threaten and bully me to reverse my course. But if you know me, you know I cannot be bullied into shying away from something that I know is right in my heart. And you also know that I'm no stranger to controversy myself. As a speaker who once said it wouldn't be a bad idea to flood a town in southern Illinois, <laughs> I know what it's like to say something that I regret. But I also like to think that when I've said something I shouldn't, my words don't invalidate everything else that I've done. I feel the same way about Rush. He may say things that strike a nerve. He's right most of the time. He even may say things that I disagree with from time to time. But that doesn't undo everything he's accomplished in his career. And it doesn't provide a reasonable excuse why we shouldn't honor, uh, we shouldn't, he shouldn't be honored by his home state for his many accomplishments. We're here today to honor him because he is a Missourian who's accomplished more in his life than most of us would even dare dream possible in our own. He's had the type of success and made the kinds of contributions to the field of talk radio that it put him in both the Radio Hall of Fame and the National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And, and even though many on the left don't want to admit it, he's devoted a large portion of his life to philanthropic efforts that have made a, a real difference in the lives of countless Americans. This year marks the 22nd year in a row that his brush has led a radiothon to help leukemia and lymphoma society fight against blood cancer. Just last year alone, Rush raised $3 million in the search for a cure. And Rush works together with the Marine Corps and Law Enforcement Foundation to provide the children with fallen soldiers and the police officers with the assistance that their fathers no longer can. This is Rush Limbaugh. But these aren't the kind of things that the radical liberal groups want to make known when they talk about Rush. Instead, these liberals who try to put forward the illusion that they believe in a, a philosophy of tolerance or understanding, they're anything but tolerant, and they're anything but understanding. But fortunately, there are only a handful of them here in Missouri. I think I read where the latest anti-Rush rally in Columbia actually broke single digits. <laughs> Which Rush, it's actually an improvement because they had an anti-Rush rally at the Capitol where there were more media than protesters. Seriously though, this is a proud moment for me today to be able to honor someone from my part of the state 
who is the very definition of a famous Missourian. But I'm, on, a, on an honest note, I'm also glad that we're finally able to answer the question so many reporters were asking me last week. Where's the rush bust? I'm happy to tell, I'm happy, happily to tell you, it's right here, it's right where it belongs, it's in our state capitol, and in the Hall of Famous Missouri.